And this is Taskmaster. In this show, I, Greg Davis, make some accomplished but needy comedians do stupid things for me. Why? Because I can. I'm a powerful man. Look at me. Thank you. <laughs> they have no idea how each other did, but they will soon find out. I should be judging both what they did and how they did it. My word is final. The contestants will definitely respect me. <laughs> Let's meet them now. First, he's wearing a suit because he's both professional and from a different generation to the others. <laughs> <laughs> It's a very smart Frank Skinner. <laughs> Secondly, a man who's chosen not to wear a suit and who clearly needs a haircut, Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> Next up, a woman I once genuinely witnessed calling for her mum because she'd seen a mouse, Roisin Connerty. <laughs> A man who has quickly gained a reputation in comedy for being livid all the time, Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> and finally, a future poet laureate, if some massive poet disaster happens, <laughs> Tim Key! <laughs> and as always, I am both aided and fluffed by my personal assistant, Alex Horn. Mm. Should we have a little bit of banter? OK. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thanks, um, thanks for giving me this opportunity. You're welcome. <laughs> so, Alex, tell us about the first task. OK, well, I think you're tremendous. And, as always, the first task... <laughs> ..is the prize task. Each of the contestants have brought in one of their own possessions for the prize hall, and they're going to be awarded points, depending on how impressed you are by them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and tonight, you've asked them to bring in their most unusual item. And that's what I'll be scoring this first round on them, how unusual their unusual item is. Mm -hmm. Frank Skinner, um, what was your unusual item that you decided to donate? Um, I have bought in a pair of grape scissors. <laughs> and, yes, they have grapes on their shaft. <laughs> when I first saw them, I thought they were emeroid tweezers, but no. <laughs> Has anyone in this room ever heard of grape cutters before? Yeah? yeah? Huh. Doesn't sound that unusual, Frank. Uh, Josh, what did you bring in? I brought in a um, football signed by the Plymouth Argyle squad that lost in the Division 2 1994 playoff semi finals. <laughs> Did they use invisible ink? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's happened to the is signature. It, <laughs> is, it, is it unusual? It's the most unusual signed football I've ever seen. <laughs> what did you bring in? I found this old tramp poet and he carves on benches and I found him sitting next to the bench that he just carved into, and I took a photo. <laughs> that is uh, uh, from a trip that Roisin and I had to the seaside recently, where <laughs> I paid for lunch and the petrol. So, <laughs> <laughs> interestingly, you, you would... You didn't uh... pay for lunch. Hey? You didn't pay for lunch. Yeah, I did. You let a tramp pay for your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> put you in last place, but Romesh has just snatched that from you <laughs> before I even know what he's brought in. What have you brought in? Uh, I've brought in a snow globe uh, that features my children photoshopped is little Santas. <laughs> it was given to me as a Christmas present for my sister-in-law. I think we can all agree it's the shittest present in the history of mankind. <laughs> uh, I get presented that picture yeah. in a snow globe, which has very few of those little gran... You know the granule? The snow density is piss poor. <laughs> like, you, sh you have to shake it for ages, and it's only floating for about half... Two seconds maximum. <laughs> like, it's awful. Um, is it signed? <laughs> <laughs> All three of them are signed it. OK, there. yeah. A snow globe isn't an unusual item, but your fury is. Yeah, but <laughs> snow globes featuring my three children to this only 250, yes. 300. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Key, what did you bring in? Reindeer skull. <laughs> <laughs> and... 
that, my friends, is how to play this game. <laughs> OK, let's not mess around. A clear winner. <laughs> the winner of round one, ladies and gentlemen, Mr Tim Key. Behind the point. OK. And, ladies and gentlemen, there are all of the unusual prizes. Now, they're up there on the balcony, and the winner of this competition will have to take all of that shit home. <laughs> so, let's get these onto the leaderboards. OK, so who have you got in second place, Greg? I've got, um, well, the Grape Scissors. They're insane. <laughs> OK, and third? Oh, you know, Snow Globe. <laughs> All right, and so you've got the picture of yourself in fourth. Yes, of course, and okay. I, I would put that last if I could, but the football was so bad I have to put it. <laughs> it's an unsigned football, Josh. I'm going to sign football. You've rubbed off the signatures and put me last. <laughs> <laughs> That's harsh. Which all means... <laughs> the scoreboard looks like this. Josh Widdicombe in last place, Tim Key in first place. On with the next task, the first task proper. This took place in my lab at my Taskmaster retreat. And for good reason. I'll put this on first of all. I'll be honest, this feels a bit kinky. <laughs> there used to be a guy in my village who used to wear one of these. Is this my task? <laughs> God, I feel like I'm back at school in science lessons. Oh, I really, uh, really need my reading goggles. In the lab, there is a watermelon. Eat as much watermelon as possible. You have one minute. The time starts when you open the door to the lab. I'm allergic to watermelon. Frustrating, as I just ate one in my dressing room. Uh, I love watermelon. I'm a big fan of it. But, you know, I'm sure it was going to be ruined by this experience. If you're in any doubt about the tone of this show, now you know. Uh, there's five comedians being forced to eat as much watermelon as they can <laughs> <laughs> whilst wearing a white boiler suit. Josh, we're going to see you first. Are you a melon fan? Um, yeah. You know, fine, seven out of ten. It's quite a strange question, isn't what, it? What um, could you... <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at Josh's attempt. Bearing in mind... The task is to eat as much watermelon as you can in the time allowed. Well, OK, so I'm worried we're, I'm going to get in there and there's going to be a watermelon sitting on a table. So I need some kind of carving knife or knife. I mean, I don't know how you do better than that. I'll show you afterwards, if you like. <laughs> you know, I was impressed that he used implements, but I, I, I didn't think there was a much sense of urgency there. I've, I've seen my grandmother eating melon, and it seemed a similar sort of pace. I've seen your grandmother You've eating melon. You've seen my grandmother eating melon, right? Yeah, yeah, well, she <laughs> loved it! <laughs> you know, you were just nibbling I said, away I quite it. like melon. There's the proof. <laughs> I thought I'd done well. I'll be honest with you, I think you've slowed down the footage. I wouldn't put it past you. No, you did all right. You ate, uh, in one minute, you ate 218 grams of watermelon. That's the equivalent of, sort of 10 mice, if you want to imagine that. <laughs> like eating... That's pretty good! Yeah, it's good. It's all right. <laughs> Just to calm you down a little bit, any, any antagonism between you and I over this issue, it's, it's all scripted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> see the master, Frank Skinner. OK, here we go. I must go for banter. <laughs> Before we get on to that amazing technique, I mean, there's a lot of ageist references to Frank being the oldest member of the panel. I want you to have a look at Frank in a white boiler suit because we're of the opinion that he looks 12 years of age. <laughs> <laughs> 
Can I clear any melon up for you, sir? <laughs> Frank, such an impressive start. Yeah, well, I, I'd forgotten my watermelon scissors. <laughs> Is I, it, it had not occurred to me that it, it would be a bright idea to get a knife or anything like that. I was just going to... I was prepared to tangle with it from the off. My feeling is that Frank probably gobbled a lot more melon than Josh Whittaker. No, not at all, no. He ate um, 179 grams. That's the equivalent of nine mice or ten smaller mice. <laughs> but, but less. Less, just less. Well... Wow. <laughs> Who's next? Roisin Comity. Let's see how Comity handled the melon. Oh. oh. I need a thing. I need some sort of hammer. Can I get a hammer? A knife? Can I go and get, I go and get it? I, I would. Oh, is there any of this? No. You've got 36 seconds, Rasheen. Oh, God. <laughs> a bigger one, a bigger one. <laughs> this, no, no, this jaw, this jaw. to do this. It's such a shame. <laughs> I mean, I just grazed it. <laughs> oh. I've got so many questions. <laughs> I guess my first question is, you knew before you went into that room that the challenge was to eat as much melon as possible. And yet your reaction to seeing a melon on the table was... Oh! <laughs> oh, clever twist! I, I thought it was going to be pre-prepared melon. I didn't think I had to cut a watermelon. I thought it was going to be like a massive bowl of melon and just keep eating. <laughs> <laughs> like a melon buffet. So when I thought it was like... like a melon buffet? That's not a thing! <laughs> How many seconds had passed before Roisin started to eat melon? Oh, 54 seconds. 54 <laughs> seconds. Uh, I don't want to be negative, but I have eaten that much melon by walking past the fruit stand. <laughs> <laughs> How much melon did Roisin Conaty eat? I've put it in Rolos. She ate one Rolo, nine grams. Lovely. <laughs> I know we're all having fun, but this thing is funded by adverts, so we've got to stop for a while. So you see. Welcome back to Taskmaster. If you've just joined us, you've missed some comedians either eating or not eating a watermelon. <laughs> Who are we seeing next? We're going to see Ramesh and Tim together. together. I've, I've grouped them and you'll see why. If I throw up, would you weigh it? How far we've come from <laughs> Josh Widdicombe gently spooning melon into his mouth. <laughs> 
to two oh, psychopaths. <laughs> well, you threw it on my, the floor. Uh, my, I mean, you have to eat that's, on the floor. that's my first question to you. There was clearly a table in front of you. <laughs> Why did you throw it on the floor? When, well, I knew it wasn't going to be like a melon buffet. I, 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 knew, <laughs> I knew it was going to be a whole watermelon, but I just didn't realise that a watermelon was that soft. Like, I thought, in my head, it was, like, rock hard. And then when I threw it, I was like, holy shit, that is... <laughs> That has gone everywhere. Like, I, it was a genuine surprise to me. I, I just didn't... I just hadn't anticipated the watermelon was like that. I just, I just built it up in my head, like, so I was just thinking, I'm gonna have to really smash into this. And I was like, oh, God, that's I've gone got, so I've badly. I've an image of you, uh, or you can eat buffet, just kicking the shit out of everyone. <laughs> Tim, how do you... I mean, well, really you, powerful you'll have, start. You'll have recognised the technique. Oh, I love the technique. It's your grandmother's technique. Oh, God. <laughs> It's what, it's what she's involved. <laughs> she wrote, she wrote yeah. the book on it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, well, you know, it's a minute, it's a watermelon. It's got to be grandmother technique. Smash it Smash. and eat it. Can I just say, I, I genuinely um, thought I was going to die. Like, like <laughs> basically, I, when the whistle went, I, my throat was full of watermelon, and then my, <laughs> my body just went, let's try and get that down, shall we? And, and then I started, like... But it was a weird situation because I had this bit of watermelon yeah, in my throat. It was quite a weird situation, <laughs> wasn't it? But it was... It was... It's slightly surreal. It was really big and I kept trying to swallow and my body made... Like, I just went... <laughs> like, like, it was... It was horrendous. My instinct is that Tim Key probably gobbled the most melon there because of the vomiting. I asked whether it counts if you vomit, do you weigh the vomit? And you said no. That's why I didn't vomit. I think when the whistle goes, if the melon's still inside you, it counts. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> because I think I produced more melon than I ate. <laughs> My instinct is that Keys won this. Yes, tell me otherwise. Um, Tim ate 302 grams of watermelon in one minute, and Ramesh ate 301 grams. Whoa! The way I measured it was scooping up and weighing what was left in the room compared to what was in the watermelon, so some of that had been in Romish at one point. Fine. So you scooped up Romish's vomit. <laughs> so, I mean, it's up to you. There's one gram difference, but also there was a bit, there's a bit of dodgy business with Tim. If you just want to have a look at this. Ah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Son of a bitch! <laughs> I love melon. <laughs> Could you possibly, at the end of that task, go, do you know what I fancy? <laughs> Probably an extra bit of melon, which would mean he was the winner if we count that bit of melon. Yeah, so I didn't weigh that bit because it was in Tim. If you want to subtract nine from Tim's, it would put Rummish in the lead. That's up to you, though. What I find very difficult about it is I'm pretty sure that Tim winked at us as he left. <laughs> Did he wink at us? It's very hard to tell. If it was a wink, it was a bad wink. But um, we can have a look. <laughs> If that's a wink, that's, that's such breathtaking arrogance from Kate. <laughs> I'm going to let the audience decide. Give me a cheer if you think that was a wink. Yeah! I'm taking nine grams off you. <laughs> the winner is Ramesh Ranganathan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Good work, Ramesh. One step closer to the reindeer skull. Alex, <laughs> how are the scores looking? Very, very neat. I've put them sort of with frames, and we can see them there. Um, the leader is Tim Key, followed by Ramesh, and uh, Roisin and Josh are in last and second last place. Oh. <laughs> really good fun. So, there are three tasks to go, including a live task on the stage behind me at the end, and with ornate grape-cutting scissors to play for, emotions must be running pretty high. <laughs> What's next, Alex? We have some extreme art. <laughs> is this necessary, is it? Wow. Uh... Horse shit. What a pile of horse shit. <laughs> what a pile... <clears throat> Paint the best picture of a horse whilst riding a horse. I've never ridden a horse before. And I am absolutely dog shit at painting. I, I feel more comfortable about painting a horse probably than riding one. 
Can't paint. Can't ride horses. I can draw a horse sat on a chair, and I can ride a horse in my mind. Do I get points for that? What I was hoping for here when we set this challenge was for you to capture the essence of horse. <laughs> Alex, and before we carry on, can you show us which, which horse everyone was painting? So the horse they were attempting to draw is called Baz. Uh, Baz is there. Yeah, it's not a bad horse, not a bad horse. Now, I'm going to ask you, uh, Greg, to judge the paintings just on gut reactions before you know who's painted which paintings. So here are Good. the five paintings of horses painted whilst riding horses. <laughs> I know that a lot of, uh, a lot of judges in art <laughs> competitions will find it difficult, but I'll tell you now, at one glance, I'm going to find this pretty straightforward. <laughs> This is the way I see it. Bottom right is clearly the best picture of the horse. Would you all agree with me? No! Right. Secondly, the horse next to it is a, a sort of impressionist version of a horse, but there is some degree of artistic flair. Happy with that? Yeah, yeah. so that's no. second. The top three are absolutely shit. <laughs> The one on the right has got a bridle, there's been some attention to detail that that person probably can dress themselves. The next one, incredibly bad, but so dramatically overshadowed by a picture of a giant mouse. <laughs> Genuinely don't know who painted these, but that is one of the worst paintings I've, I've ever seen in my life. It, in fact, it's, it, it's genuinely infuriated me. <laughs> As if things couldn't get any more exciting. We're going to pause for a break. See you in a minute. <laughs> Welcome back to Taskmaster. Now, where were we? Uh, would you now like to find out who painted the paintings? Yeah. I genuinely don't know who did that mouse. It's a horse, mate. Oh, I've, now I think I have a better idea. <laughs> OK, so here are the names of the artists. So, yeah, Tim Key painted the worst one. Frank Skinner painted the best one. But I think it's probably worth you watching how they painted it. You may want to change your mind, Greg. I mean, I won't change my mind on Tim's, but let's see. <laughs> I mean, I would say that Tim did spend the longest time on the horse by quite some distance. <laughs> <laughs> I sort of want to capture Baz's spirit. I've got off to a really good start, guys. I'm really pleased with how it's looking. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Slow down! Slow down! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh god! difficult to express myself artistically in this, in these conditions. How do you make brown? How do you think? Blue? <laughs> I'm quite pleased with this. Who says men can't multitask? <laughs> OK, I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I'm definitely done. It's not going to get better than that. I'm quite pleased with that. Roshan conspicuous by her absence so far. That obviously means she's either done incredibly well or incredibly badly. We'll come on to that. Frank, do you paint? Your painting's lovely. I, I, you know I what? I tell you, a weird thing has happened. I've never painted before since school. And at the end of that, I thought, you know what? I might start painting. And I went out and I actually bought some watercolours and stuff. And I'm less good not on a horse. <laughs> Josh, my understanding is you, your parents have 15 horses. I hate horses. You hate horses? Yeah, because you're not into what your parents are into. They've got a horse farm. Yeah, well, I'm from Devon, yeah. No, they live in a council flat in Ealing. Ah, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Bromesh, I, um, we haven't known each other long, but I've never seen you that happy before. I was just sort of really... I just lost myself in the joy of it. You know, I... You, have you seen the film The Matrix? You know um, when Neo suddenly sees everything in code? I suddenly saw everything in, like, auras, and I, I saw Baz's spirit. 
and I just basically tried to capture that on the canvas. And, and, and it's oh, sort of... Stop being <laughs> such a wanker! <laughs> do you know how to make brown? You don't, do you, Tim? No. no. <laughs> uh, I, I quote, how do you make brown? Alex said, how do you think? And you said, blue? <laughs> <laughs> I had bigger problems than that. Yeah, you did have bigger problems than that. I mean, what happened? What? Not very good at painting, never ridden a horse, and I guess I was sort of somewhere thinking anteaters. <laughs> I, I, I want to slam you into last place, but there's a reason, I don't know what it is yet, but there's a reason why Roisin's been separated from the group. Did so... she kill the horse? <laughs> Let's see if she did kill the horse. I 100% cannot paint a horse whilst on a horse. I don't ever get on it. I'll meet him, but I've met loads of horses. That's what I do. I meet the horse and I decide not to get on them. It's my, it's my history of horses. Would you trust us if we uh, came up with plan B? What's plan B? <laughs> this is plan B. This is M Merlin, the mechanical horse. And this is Baz, the actual horse that you're going to be painting. I don't like plan B. Rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> Red and blue. Have you started painting yet? Yeah. yeah. It's impressionist. It's quite a Cezanne. Finished? <laughs> I'm finished. Have you signed it? I have. Oh my god. So I think that came out way better than I thought. So a bit like my little pony. <laughs> Mechanical horse, a steady rhythm. I've never been on a horse. I've met hundreds of horses around the world. And All right, big shot. <laughs> it's what I do, Josh. So what do you want to do, Greg? You've put her in third place at the moment. I can't possibly put anyone... Can I just say oh, one thing? Based on where my horse was at that window, my painting is actually quite good. All I had was his head. Yeah. It was easier. He was already framed. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I think is fair. I mean, you, you did do a painting of a horse. But, for the challenge, you were supposed to be riding a horse while you were painting, and therefore, I'm afraid, you have to be disqualified from this round and take last place. Really? You don't think that's fair? I'll go last place, but not disqualified. That's fair, right? OK, I'll go third. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely reasonable. Uh, let's, stick, uh, let's stick Roisin in last place for not actually painting a horse whilst on a horse. And the winner of that task was... Mr Frank Skinner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Alex, what the score so far? OK, so it's tight. We have a leader, as you can see, uh, but there are two people in second place. Romesh in the lead, Tim and Frank in second. <laughs> right. Let's uh, crack on with the next task. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God! <laughs> that looks going to be a lot of fun. Completely empty, this bathtub. Fastest wins. You must not remove the part plug, tip or damage the bath. The time starts now. What? What didn't you understand about that task? <laughs> the task. Yeah, no, it's an easy task. It was just empty the bath without removing the plug. But there are lots of, lots of different varieties of methods. As we can see, I, again, I've grouped, I've put Frank and Josh together to display some methods. Is it, are we seeing them first? If you, if you want to, I'll do oh, whatever you want I really to do. do want to, yeah. Yeah, no, I can do that, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'm going to do this while I think. This can't be the way to do it. Can't tip it. Can't bring out the plug. Have you got a hoover? <laughs> can you do that? I mean, that's got death written all over it, hasn't it? I know there's that thing you can do with petrol, where you get the thing and you suck and then it keeps it going. It used to be a thing that ruffians used to do with petrol tanks <laughs> when they siphoned it. You have to drink a certain amount of petrol to do it, or soapy water. It's not how I remember it. <laughs> That's absolute bullshit. <laughs> I'm tempted to just go for it with a bucket. No, I'm going to go for it with a bucket. 
<laughs> but this you'd think would be quite a quick method. Does it need to be completely dry in there? It's hard to get the last, uh, the last drinks. I mean, I think you've got to say that's empty. Stop the clock. <sighs> There's some bits, but I think that's my best job. Interestingly, you both used the same method and you both made it look incredibly difficult to empty a bathtub. I can't tell you how heavy those bins of bath water are. Maybe put less water in. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm starting to think those ruffians used to turn the cars upside down. <laughs> <laughs> no, the siphoning, I was so oh, confident of the siphoning. Yeah, so to successfully siphon, you have to do it a lot better than that. That's what it's... Is that some research you've yeah, done Yeah, they both did it very badly. When you siphon, you've got to have the exit below the... Yeah, yeah, I realised that. Days later. <laughs> I, my instinct is probably, I don't know, you'd be able to tell us, but my instinct is that probably Frank did it quicker because Josh does a constant running commentary on how well he's doing. Yeah, I love your instinct. You're right. Frank uh, did it in seven minutes and 42 seconds. Josh, one minute longer, eight minutes and 52 seconds. Uh, so, Roisin, you're scared of lots of stuff. Are you scared of water? No. Let's have a look. Uh... Walked over it with such conviction. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <laughs> no. What else could I eat? I'll get some more things. There's a hole in that. <laughs> Kitchen? One minute. I've got one minute. No, one minute's gone. Oh. I might want to move back, guys. <laughs> I've got a system, I'm sticking with it. Oh. Maybe I'm sorry. I've done about half. <sighs> I had a big lunch, didn't I? <laughs> oh my god. That has really hurt my back. <laughs> yeah. Very deep. I think that's it. There's a bit left, but I don't think I'm going to get it out. How would you get that end bit out? It was, it was less than a minute slower than Josh, but you didn't empty the bath in the end. Did I? What? Well, there was, about, there, was a, there was some water at the bottom. There was, a, there was a healthy meniscus. I can only imagine what these two animals, how they approach this <laughs> task. <laughs> uh, completely empty this bathtub. Fastest wins. You must not remove the plug, tip, or damage the bath. Your time starts now. Tip or damage? Sure. Yeah. Can I get a towel? Yeah. Now. Will. Yep. Just put it there. Where? Where, where do you want it? Uh, just on the floor. OK. Can I just get a towel? I'm going to get a towel. Oh, good. 
I'm done. Ladies and gentlemen, without question, a special round of applause for who I presume is the inevitable winner, Mr Tim Key. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible passion from both men. Enjoy yourselves. Yes, yeah, good, good time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ramesh, uh, you emptied the bathtub in two minutes and 50 seconds. Whoa. Pretty quick. <laughs> Pretty quick. Terrible. <laughs> Tim Key smashed that, surely. He did smash it. Yes, he did. He, d he emptied the bathtub in two minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> so, very good. So nice to have a decisive winner in a round. I loved it. Yes. Really enjoyed it. There's one slight issue in that there was a rule saying you're not allowed to remove the plug. And during the passion of Tim, <laughs> we did spot, if you just have a look again, you can just see the plug, but it wasn't in all the time. The plug was dislodged. I mean, that, that knocks him down into stuff. It's unfortunate, it's unfortunate. The thing is, if he'd been... I didn't know that. Well, you say that. I mean, we have got footage of you after the, um... <laughs> <laughs> after the event. What were What's you doing this? here, Tim? What's this? <laughs> put, some, put some thoughts to that face. What's that face say? That's me having completed the task, just having a little walk around. <laughs> what, I... what, what have you picked up there, Tim? Up. Sorry? I was oh, just wondering what you... Sorry, you, you, you fixed something up there, <laughs> right? Put the plug up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and you put it back in the bath. You did do that. You picked up the plug and put it back in the bath, but you disguised your actions. What? Well, of course, because I... because it's cheating. <laughs> what do you mean? Can we see how effectively he disguised putting the yes, plug can. back in? Any doubt at all I had about whether that was a wink in the previous round. <laughs> oh, that was a wink, all right. What's the fair thing to do? I take him down two places, right? It's up to you. It's up to you. He took the plug Shut out. up, Roche. He took the plug out. Why don't you just drop me down by a place? No way. You've got to, you've got to go. Roche, what do you think? He took the plug out of the bath. He took the plug out of the bath, and that's enough for you. You should go into last place. Yeah. Get all judgmental getting on your high horse. <laughs> Yeah, you did. Horse. She did go last place. So, he should be honourable and do go last place. You cheated. Yeah. Well, do you know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what, I'll do it for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to put him in last place. Judgment done. <laughs> uh, so the winner of that task is Ramesh, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We're learning a lot about you today, Tim Key. After the break. <laughs> We have one more task, which will be done right here on the stage. Tim, will you cheat again? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting, isn't it? See you after the break. <laughs> Welcome back to Taskmaster, where a reindeer skull's still up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what are the scores so far? OK, so uh, Romesh is on 17 points. Uh, Frank Skinner is on 15 points. <laughs> Tim to read at the task, would you? OK, so, Tim, here is the live task. <coughs> if you could read it clearly and slowly, please, Tim. Pop up a tent, get in the tent, zip up the tent, pop on a onesie in the tent and emerge from the tent wearing the onesie. Fastest wins. Yes, yeah, so we're just explaining again. So you're going to pop up your tent, you're yep. going to get into the tent... Get into the tent. Zip it up. Zip the tent. Put on the onesie that is currently in your rucksack. Come out of the tent. First out of the tent wins. And where do we put our tent? No, I mean, aren't we all going to get in each other's way? Hey, you put them yeah, up in yeah, these yeah, yeah, yeah. All that you can do internally. <laughs> can I say I'm 58? I might never come out of the tent. <laughs> Alex, get ready to blow your whistle. Let's get on with this. Good luck, everyone. Your time starts. <laughs> Let's hear some names. They need encouragement, these people. Frank's in his work. He's in. Frank is in. This way, Josh. This way. This way. That's lovely. Zip at the front, please. 
Zip at the front, please. Back a bit, back a bit, back a bit. Zip at the front, please. Zip at... You're not in it! You're not in it! You're not in it! Get in it! Get in it! You have to get in it! Are you in it, Roisin? Are you in the tent? Yes! You're not in it! You're not in it! You're going to get in the tent. Get in it! You have to get in it! in it! You're not in it! Put it that way! She's not in the tent! Do we need to send someone in for Frank yet? <laughs> he's been in he's, there for hours. He's been very still for a very... Oh! That's it! Down there. Yeah! <laughs> Looks a little bit like election night. <laughs> It's as good as it's going to get. Go on, Ramesh! It's patronising. Go on, Ramesh! <laughs> you almost made me forgive the crimes of earlier in the episode. What an incredible victory for Mr Tim Keane. <laughs> Come down and join us. Uh, Alex, you work out how that's affected the final scores, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Magnificent performance from the obvious winner of that task, Mr Tim Key, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> OK, so let's find out. Has Ramesh lost the snow globe of his children? <laughs> Who's going to win a reindeer skull with a hole in it? Let's have a look at the final scores, Alex. Here they are. Ooh. Oh, tie break. I genuinely don't know what happens here. Alex, <laughs> Alex what the hell are we going to do about this? There must be a winner. We did a tie break task when I hid in an area of the task cottage and they opened the task saying, find Alex. So if we see whether Frank or Romesh found me first, they will be the overall winner. Okay, so this whole thing is going to be decided on a game of hide and seek. I think so. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> find Alex. Fastest wins, wins your time starts. Yeah. No. It's not in here. I found. Alex, I got it. I got it. One minute, fifty. Have a, have a seat, Frank. Alex. Hello, mate. Hello. Hello there. Two minutes, twenty-seven. Okay. Right, Mesh, uh, I imagine you wish you'd uh, honed your hide and seek skills more when you were a child. My parents did lock me away and stuff. <laughs> uh, 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 but... <laughs> In that video clip, I felt like I looked like I was moving more frantically than Frank, and he had sort of a chilled out vibe, but yet still destroyed me in, in terms of the time. But it's the you know, the tortoise and the hare. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Lovely. But... Less less movement, more finding. Yeah, but on the plus side, <laughs> but I don't have that dog shit snow globe anymore. So. <laughs> so the winner of today's show, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Frank Skinner. Well done. <laughs> That's all for this week. I've been the Taskmaster and this has been Taskmaster. Thank you, Alex. You, Mr Skinner, you may go and collect your prize haul. Mr Frank Skinner, your winner, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you for watching and remember, learning to trust is one of life's most difficult tasks. Isn't that right, Tim? <laughs> Good night. Next on Dave, it's the show that happened so fast, they didn't even have time to give it a name. But it didn't matter as all it needed was a table and some comedians to sit around and chat. It's Alan Davis, as yet untitled. <laughs>